Hello, Internet. Welcome to... <coughs> where, where was I? Oh, yeah. MCC is a well-known tournament where Minecraft YouTubers fight for golden coins and a digital crown. But behind that shiny exterior, there are hints that the hidden lore of this event is a lot darker than it lets on at first. Also, quick disclaimer here at the start, this is all speculation. None of what I'm saying is what the Nox crew definitely intend, want to convey, or any of that sort. I'm just a crackhead connecting dots in ways that aren't meant to be connected. Let's start by talking about the MCC elevator. The spot that enough players need to gather within in order to break it and be transported elsewhere usually with some sort of easter egg or reference. The first interesting thing we know about the elevator is that it has an insane number of levels, which is a statement backed up by what happened in MCC 5, where players kept falling into lower and lower levels continuously, as well as it likely being a reference to the Great Glass Elevator from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because of what happened in MCC 10. We've also seen plenty of different places the elevator can and has gone to during all the different MCCs where the competitors managed to break it. Hold on though, because even though this theory is centered around the elevator, it's not nearly as uh, uplifting as you'd expect. If you do enjoy these videos, please consider subscribing. Generally, I put hours and hours into these videos and it wasn't easy at all to find lore in MCC. And believe me, you subscribing would help me out a ton. Every level or floor that the contestants were transported to by the elevator has had some sort of theme or place, and it's different every time, but there's a catch. You see, I look desperately for some sort of connection between these places that wasn't just, oh, the Nox crew thought this would be funny, and I couldn't find one. There seems to be nothing that the elevator can't do, really. So for this theory, we're going to be assuming that the elevator can go pretty much anywhere, including different dimensions, and more importantly, any time. Let me explain. The way the elevator works is it takes a snippet or a snapshot of a certain time and place, whether that be less than a minute on loop or a still image, that has already happened and teleports the players there when they break the elevator. There are only two MCCs that don't immediately follow this theory, MCC 10 and MCC 5, and both of these are explained in the same way. They're an insight for us, the viewer, into how the elevator actually works. Okay, so I know that, uh, elevated quickly. But what with the entire theory relying on the elevator being this incredibly powerful device, there's even more. Elevators, by definition, go up and down, but most elevators have a set limit to this, and perhaps the most famous example of this rule being broken is from the Roald Dahl book Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which I mentioned earlier, and its subsequent sequel, Charlie and the Great Glass Elevator, in which the elevator does almost exactly what the players in MCC 10 did. Instead of obeying the conventional elevator rules, it rocketed sky high breaking the glass roof of the factory or decision dome it was in and heading to space. It's also interesting to note, at this time music from the movie adaptation of the book for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory played as the players rose, once again pointing to this being a reference to that movie. This then also ties into MCC 5's elevator, in which we can see that there is an insane number of not only levels that the elevator can go to, but identical elevators waiting and ready to be used when needed, and showing that the elevator is similar to the Great Glass Elevator from the books in another way, because that elevator also also has an insane number of rooms that it services underground. Jesus Christ, how many times are I going to say elevator in this series? The people and places, or should I say dimensions, who and which the elevator visits are also very aware of MCC and its existence as a tournament. During MCC 8, the elevator dropped into a house-like setting filled with people named Orange Supporter. Orange was in tent at the time and this is likely a meta joke with the person sitting down in front of what seems like a TV, which is playing what looked vaguely like the Battlebox minigame, being a viewer of that very same MCC. Also, side note here, but it's very interesting that Battlebox hadn't even been played at this point, giving us some circumstantial evidence that the elevator can perhaps travel forward in time, but this isn't backed up anywhere else and could be explained by, I don't know, the viewer being a time traveler, so I'm not going to consider it canon. In addition to this, during the MCC 9 elevator joke, we're shown a factory with differently named Scots, or should I say, differently named S Major 1995, or should I say, differently named MCC organizers, or should I say, <laughs> and finally, MCC. MCC 12's elevator was a direct reference to the tournament's one year anniversary. So, who runs the elevator then? Well, at first, the obvious answer seems to be the event organizers in real life, the Nox crew. However, logically, there are a few flaws with this elevator theory that, uh, push my buttons. <laughs> first, the Nox crew wouldn't make an easily accessible elevator that would allow players to see things that they don't want them to. For example, in MCC 12, when the elevator quite literally crashed the party on them singing Happy Birthday to MCC, or more recently, in MCC 15. How does MCC 15 matter, I hear no one ask? <laughs> well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> 
You see, the Noxu doesn't only run a tournament, it also in canon runs a taco and burger shop, one of which is called BBF or Burgers But Fast, and the other TGTT Tacos, or to get the other side but morphed into a taco version. They appeared outside of the Decision Dome during the recent tournaments, and we know the Nox crew is involved in these because BBF is regularly staffed by Violet, who works on the models and 3D icons for Nox crew in real life, and this is further backed up by her signature on the NDA in the BBF factory room, which we'll return to later. TGT Tacos, on the other hand, is run by Thor, or Cheesier Pasta, who builds for MCC in real life, and there's a very obvious rivalry going on between two joints in canon because they are stealing each other's customers. If we look at the setup of the stalls though, they even mimic the MCC games that their names are puns of. BBF, which is a pun of Bingo, has a lot more items to collect for the spatulas, the burgers and the fries, just like Bingo. Whereas to get the other side, Tacos is a mobile food truck because it has to go fast. However, the idea that the Canon Knox crew members run the elevator is disproved because of what we've seen pertaining to these shops, or rather, one of them, BBF, during MCC 15. The snapshot we're shown on this level of the elevator is a slime factory, which reveals that BBF is lying about getting their meat from actual farms, and in actuality, it is being made from factory manufactured slime. Where have I seen this before? This isn't something that most Nox crew members would want us to see, hence it doesn't make sense that the elevator would be run by them. But then, who made it, and who's in charge of this time-travelling cross-dimensional device? The actual answer is a real <laughs> no-brainer when you hear the evidence for it though. The elevator is actually made by the zombies that run MCC, as you can see a zombie repairman working on the elevators when it isn't working. The elevator is supposed to break every MCC though, so I feel bad for this guy, I mean, talk about a dead-end job, am I right? We can also see the zombie chicken jockey who presumably makes or directs the entire event in front of the dome as a statue. This is further backed up by every time that there's a hub minigame like the easter eggs in MCC 4 and the candy in MCC 11, which were the easter and halloween MCCs respectively, there being no end elevator, it's closed off. This makes sense when you consider that setting up the elevator is extra work for the very same zombies who make the event and thereby the hub minigames, and thus it makes a lot of sense that the elevator wouldn't be set up. More evidence to support this is that there are chickens randomly in MCC minigames, as well as elevators, for example used in the Decision Dome, or as well as used in test tubes in a lot of the factory style elevator drops. Forgetting the uh... <laughs> Egonomics of storing hundreds of live chickens for use in the events. If the zombies are making the event, then the chickens are presumably the people who help test the event as well as the steeds for the zombies, again as is visible from the statues. This is even further backed up when the idea of whacking chickens for it to get to the other side was scrapped, with the canon explanation probably going along the lines of the fact that killing that many chickens wasn't sustainable for the zombies. <laughs> I guess they thought that idea was pretty... Wow. <laughs> Zombies are responsible for teleporting the players to different games and also creating the game, so it makes sense that they'd have the power to teleport players to different dimensions. The question is, then, where do they get the power to teleport and transport things from? If we look at the elevator and the tournament itself, both require players to function, so it only makes sense that somehow the zombies are taking their power from the people within the server. This also explains why a lot of players miss certain events and why MTT only happens once a month. Players need time to reach charge the energy that has been depleted from them by teleporting. There is only one player who has played in every event, who is Scott, and who we can see, as I said earlier, in the MCC9 elevator, has a lot of different aliases and therefore bodies that he inhabits canonically in the MCC universe. Thanks to his energy being divided between them, he doesn't need the time to recharge because he's already recharging in this factory setting and never miss a tournament. This ties into the idea that the zombie used the player's power to teleport them around and organize the event, which while keeping them satisfied using minigames and other activities. However, the players can feel that their energy is being exhausted, and so the zombies need to disguise themselves taking some percentage of the power for themselves without the players realizing, otherwise the players might uh, <laughs> take steps to avoid the elevator. They do this by teleporting the players at every opportunity they can get which the players know takes some amount of power, and then taking a little bit more than is necessary, which builds up over time. They fill nearly every minigame and the hub up with audience skins, which means that they can not only access the audience for MCC, but can also teleport them as well, with the only reason they aren't teleporting more being, crucially, that the official MCC server can't handle more players. Why are the zombies doing all this work then? Well, it's because they don't have enough power to teleport to one place, a place where they could get nearly infinite power from a virtually limitless supply of players compared to the official MCC server. MCC Island.
Once the zombies can reach MCC Island, which is the Noctru's new public Java server that they're opening, which will be based around MCC, and open it up, they'll have the power in canon to do basically anything because the sheer number of players that'll be there and therefore will be able to do whatever they want with such power. Now, what the zombies will actually do with that power? I have no idea. Maybe the zombies could start a, uh, crypt of currency. But, uh, that's up to you guys to guess in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, consider this video about what could happen if Green joined the Dream SMP. Subscribe!